You have it. I have it. We all hate it. Weird wall or hull lines on simple models, like boxes or vases, the banshee, and many more. And there is somehow no conclusive fix online? Not anymore. In the coming minutes, we'll finally explain the root problem and then solve it using slicer settings and design tricks, tested on countless test prints and real-life examples to fix your own prints. This works for any machine and slicer, but we'll use Orca Slicer because it's the most similar to all other slicers. Let's get started with understanding the problem using our main test print. A simple lid for a box. We'll first print it out using a standard print profile of 0.2 mm layer height, two walls and basic speed and acceleration settings. We only use dry and calibrated filament with a correct flow rate and an excellent printer. This ensures controlled quality, the source of all happiness for us Germans. Looking at the result using studio lighting immediately shows an ugly line on the outside wall at the z-height of the inner lid surface. The rest of the print looks excellent with a smooth top and clean walls. So what's the problem? Let's look at the preview to spot anything unusual. Overall, our basic layer preview looks completely fine, but if we go to the top right and select layer times, we see something suspicious. Our weird layer line is exactly where layers take long to print, some taking around 10 to 15 times longer than others. Common advice to fix our issue is smoothing out the layer times for less abrupt changes. We will quickly try it out by right-clicking our part and adding multiple height range modifiers. Under Objects, you can add more by clicking the plus icon. In our case, the different modifiers cover the whole problem section. In these modifiers, we'll speed up the slow layers and slow down the fast layers. Hit the pause button if needed. Our result is more even layer times for the problem section. Let's print it out and take a look at the changes. We can easily see that the print is even slightly worse now. But I can already guess what some will say. So let's really push the issue by going into our filament settings to set the minimum layer time to 150 seconds. We'll also reduce the minimum allowed print speed and activate don't slow down outer walls for extra uniform looking walls. The preview shows that now all layers take between 150 and 165 seconds to print. So very close print times for each layer. The print result has gotten even worse. Adjusting layer times will rarely fix this issue. Now I promise this will all make perfect sense in a few minutes. Let's see what's really going on here. Longer layer times often indicate more material being used on a layer, which is the source of the problem. When cooling down, more material leads to greater shrinking forces. This in return pulls connected walls inwards. This inward pull is clearly visible when we print our design at 150% size. It's also slightly visible on the first bottom solid layers. Slight bulging can happen as well, but more on that later. We can fix our so-called box or hull line issue by three solutions and their combinations. I call them decoupling, shrink control and, you guessed it, crime. Or at least something closely related. We'll start with decoupling. In simple terms, separating walls and high mass solid layers so they don't pull on our outer walls anymore. One easy solution if we have design access is just increasing the thickness of our upper wall section. The thicker our wall, the more separation we get. A close preview look shows a clear gap between top layers and walls for our new design, but also an anti-bulging gap due to free shrinking for the upper wall section. We'll look at the results in a minute. But what if we can't change the design? The first logical approach is reducing the top and infill overlap for walls, which is normally set to 15%. Setting it to zero, or for example even negative values, generates a gap to our walls. Be careful, even 0% weakens the part considerably. For the upper section, when using classic wall generation, we can reduce our line width slightly. This will lead to a little filling line, which we can remove by setting filter out tiny gaps to a high enough value. We again have a small gap in the upper section, which still connects at the very top. These are the three solutions in comparison. Hey grandpa! Yes you! Can we stop with all the shaking for one second? Thanks man. The design solution with the biggest gap is the overall best result, especially in real life. 
The overlap solution shows slight improvement on the lower section like expected. Similarly, the upper wall gap solution improves the top section. Let's look at more effective but less intuitive settings to add. Let's set our wall printing order to inner, outer, inner. Now our outer wall is printed without other walls next to it, leading to more precise outer walls, symmetrical cooling and shrinking from all sides. The print improvement is clearly visible. But be careful if you print with only two walls, as this might lead to more visible seams due to the automatic switch to the outer inner wall printing order. If you like this detailed type of content so far, hit that like button, subscribe or comment below. There's a lot more to come. If you don't want to change the wall printing order, make sure to activate the precise wall setting. This setting reduces the overlap for outer walls, which slightly decouples as well. If we truly want to decouple our walls, a small gap at the top layer height inside the design can be another excellent solution. For inclined walls, you can do it like the user rag tag recommended in his sketch. Also effective and easy decoupling is achieved by adding chamfers to all floor edges of your design. The bigger the chamfer, the more we decouple. Design changes like these are easily done with my CAD software Alibre. After using it for several months, I had to reach out to Alibre to sponsor this video. Their one-time payment, CAD software, is honestly better than anything I've used in the past. It's intuitive, easy to learn, stable and has some incredibly advanced features. Some we'll use later on, but let's get back to our chamfer print. We can easily see that the top layers are no longer connected to our walls due to our chamfer change. This prints very clean as we'll see in the next chapter. If none of this design decoupling is possible for you, adding different types of clever modifiers to decouple walls might be an alternative solution, like Prusa did in this post for the Benchy. But this depends a lot on your individual design shape. Let's continue with our next big topic, shrink control. Tests show that fast material cooling leads to the best results to reduce the box line. So high cooling fan speed is beneficial. For PLA, 100% fan speed everywhere is best with my printer. A low ambient temperature and an open chamber also help. Be careful with other materials. Some like ABS will warp under these conditions. Surprisingly, another big quality improvement is achieved by uniform print speeds. Setting everything to the outer wall speed will result in more even flow and shrinkage across the part. Thank you to Ioannis for figuring this one out. But now, back to grandpa's shaking print showcase. We can immediately see how high ambient temperature and slow cooling worsens the hull line. On the contrary, uniform print speeds improved our part considerably. This test also explains our worse than standard layer time adjusted print from earlier. Here the speed and flow are all over the place, which we now know leads to uneven shrinkage and a pronounced box line. If we combine all our decoupling and shrink control slicer settings, the print improves a lot, but we sadly can't fully remove the line. Add a design solution like the little inside chamfer from earlier and the floor line is completely gone. That's awesome. But what about fixing the root issue of local shrinking forces? This is also possible by removing large flat layers. For example, the first version of this water tray had a little edge for the plant pot to sit on. We need this edge. But even at that size, it already leads to a visible floor line. Most of the time, functional edges like this can be changed to smaller sections to control shrinking forces. With this small change, even standard settings show no hull line and lead to clean outer walls. If we want to get extra fancy, we could even reduce the flat lid surface. This can be done with a single loft operation and advanced edge control to curve the wall section in Alibre. Other advanced Alibre features include sketch surface wrapping, mechanical assembly move animations, incredible direct step editing and many more. I highly recommend checking Alibre out below. Four other settings that might also help with your hull line are adding more walls, be careful, this can also reconnect walls and make it worse, and turning ensure vertical shell thickness off to prevent unwanted wall connections. Keep in mind, both are highly design dependent. Other users also recommended changing the skin expand distance and using low stress infill patterns. But this last one never helped in my tests. What does help 
is using material that shrinks less, like shown in this quick overview. Fiber-enforced filaments also have a positive impact on shrinking. Our print in carbon fiber PLA has a less visible box line due to less shrinking and an overall rougher texture. Which leads us right to our last chapter. We'll call this one Hiding the Crimes. There is no problem if no one can see it. Let's start with an easy one first. Adding some fuzzy skin. The skin thickness makes the most difference in part appearance. For specific sections, you can also paint this on or use modifiers. The test print shows the more fuzziness we add, the more crimes we can hide. Pretty simple, but can be effective. Our next option is adding a pattern to the outside wall. At the floor height, patterns with some type of angled or curved wall are best. Avoid floors at the more vertical areas. Most of the time, a simple pattern can be added with a single sweep operation. Just to make sure, our preview still clearly shows a problematic connection between top layers and walls. But the printed part looks fantastic. Our monkey brains somehow think the inward pull is just part of the pattern. We'll write this banana scented brain error straight into our next trick. First we'll move the floor down, so we have only solid layers at the bottom. We unknowingly saw the benefit earlier. Multiple solid layers connecting to the print plate show less of a shrinking problem. Now we add a chamfer followed by a fillet on the upper edge to confuse our inner monkey. We'll do the same process on the large box, but the fillet is a little bigger this time. Again. This is what both parts looked like before the change. And this is what they look like after. If you look very closely, the lid has a just slightly visible hull line. But the bigger fillet for the box looks absolutely perfect. This trick works so well that I use it for all my box shapes, like this jewelry box made in white PLA, where we can see every little defect. In fact, for nearly all my other planter and vase designs uploaded online. The base is angled or curved, so even basic print profiles show no box line. All these example models are linked in the description for anyone interested. Try fixing your own stubborn print issues and comment below if this video has helped you out. Click here for more videos like this one and thank you for watching.